Welcome. As we understood in our earlier lecture, the importance of the gas liquid separation in the natural gas treatment and we have looked into some of the ways to separate the gas and li liquid. In this lecture, we shall be further carrying on on some of the other methods of separating the gas and liquid in the natural gas systems. So, this particular lecture is on the separation of gas and liquid in natural gas systems part 2. In this what we shall be learning, we shall be learning about some other separators like gas filter, slug catchers, Stutzter supersonic separator and high efficiency liquid gas coalescer. So, let us first come to the gas filter separator and it, it kind this kind of separator is used to separate the finer liquid droplets and solid particles from the gas stream and these have higher efficiency than the centrifugal separator, but only thing is this in this case we have a filter element this has to be replaced from time to time because the filter elements will collect all this liquid particles or the other dust particles and the pores will get now clogged and once the pores get clogged no more uh, fluid can pass through the filter. So, we have to replace it. So, this needs this kind of replacement and this can be used for high gas flow rates. Now, this has two parts one is filter and the mist eliminator. So, let us look into all of these one by one. So, here we have the filters. What are the filters? They are some fiber glass tubular filter pack which can hold liquid particles of sub micron size. So, very small liquid particles can be held by these filters and these are the, the some of the typical filters uh, used in this uh, for this purpose and here we can see that they have these things are uh, very well they have some kind of pores in them and the gas can the liquid can pass through it and they, this will be these uh, pores will be stopping the liquid particles or the sub mitron particles to uh, pass through them. So, they will not be going out into the gaseous stream. Next we have the mist eliminator and in the mist eliminator it is generally used at the outlet of the gas because whatever carryover of the liquid takes place inside the gas those liquids will be retained inside the separator. So, that is why we are using mist eliminator. In this also we have two types one is the wire mesh type and as the name suggests uh, that we have different kind of wire meshes. This is random wire mesh, these are layered wire meshes like we can have some kind of plate kind of thing of wire meshes and we put them layer by layer. So, we have layered wire meshes or we can have rolled uh, thing that we make these pieces and we make a big sheet and roll it. So, this is how we are making the rolled uh, eliminator and these elim mesh eliminator comes in modular designed like this and they are characterized by their porosity and the wire diameter. The smaller the particles to be retained, we want them to be less and less porous okay. and what is porosity? Porosity is the volume of the uh, void uh, per unit volume of the particular system. So, that is a pore, that is a porosity and these may be made from either poly metal or from polymer. So, some metallic things are like stainless steel, alumina, copper, titanium or like polyethylene, polypropylene etcetera. After learning about this, we go to the another type of mist eliminator. This is a vane type of mist eliminator and as you see this particular structure is a vane structure and in this, this is a vertical vane and in this what we are finding that as this gas liquid mixture flow up because of this particular slanting of these vanes, what happens every time it starts to move up it hits this particular surface and when it hits it the liquid gets uh, stuck here and comes down while the gas moves up. So, depending on how much liquid we want to separate out we can have this length differently and also we can use many vanes like this in parallel to take out the liquid or we may also have the horizontal vane in which we find that again this structure is similar and we find that the as the gas liquid mixture flows this liquid is retained and this liquid collects here and this collects through this comes out through this 
drainage pipes. So, these drainage pipes are used in this we are not using drainage pipe, but here we are using drainage pipe. So, the drainage pipe collects the liquid from these various veins. So, this is how we are having the vein type eliminator. Then we go to the wire mesh eliminator, eliminate, we saw this wire mesh eliminator. Then what we do that uh, we go to this gas filter separator. Here we have and we can see that there is a big chamber and here is the gas inlet nozzle, nozzle and it passes to the filter section. So, here we have the all the filter, filter section here and here we have the uh, mist eliminator or extractor at the outlet and what we find here that the particles are filtered from the gas stream uh, when they are passing through these filters and the liquid particles coalesce into larger droplets. And once they coalesce into larger droplets, they can be easily drained out and whatever gas is passing through this particular outlet, here we are putting the mist extractor, so that any kind of residual liquid which is being carried over by the gas can be retained inside the separator and here we have the liquid outlet and here we have the gas outlet after liquid separation. So, this is the overall uh, working of the uh, this gas separator and now we find that here this is applied for many purposes like in compressor stations and why because we need to protect the compressors from free liquid and prevent cylinder wear from solids. So, we cannot allow any solids in the compressor otherwise they may corrode the uh, or erode the solid or the, the liquids are not generally allowed in the compressors. Then we have gas storage system fuel lines to power uh, plants and engines in this why we need this gas separator because to prevent the injection and withdrawal of solids, dust and small amounts of liquids. Then desiccant beds which are used desiccant means we are trying to remove the water. So, which are used for the dehydration purposes. So, in this also to protect the bed and to collect the dust from carryover from the beds. And then we have the metering and pressure reduction stations at city gates to remove any kind of liquid hydrocarbons, water, sand particles and other kind of uh, pipe scaling. If there is any scaling happening, then those scale, scaled particles should not also go with the gas. So, we are using this kind of gas filters. Next we come to slug catchers and these are generally used at the receiving terminal of the offshore pipeline. So, when from the uh, sea if you are getting that gas then at the offshore when that means it is when it is coming on the land on the land we are using the slug catchers and what are slugs? Slugs are nothing but some big lumps of the liquid in the pipelines. So, we want to retain those catch those big lumps of liquid to hold the slugs that means these slug catchers, catchers will also hold after separation of the slugs they will also hold the slugs temporarily and then before it is drained out taken out and then to allow the slugs to follow into downstream equipment and facilities at a rate at which the liquid can be handled properly. That means, we will keep the slug for some time and we will release it in a controlled manner because otherwise it may so happen that in the downstream lines if we allow all the slugs to pass through at one go then the downstream may not be able to handle. So, that is why these kind of slug catchers are designed also to retain the slugs temporarily for some time. Again we have the classifications like vessel type and pipe type and the pipe type is the most commonly used uh, slug catchers and here we have the diagram of slug catchers. So, first we have some fingers, the, what are the fingers? These are the fingers, we call them fingers, so in these fingers are there and we can see that they have two slopes, one is this and then they are this particular slope and the gas is coming from here. So, what happens? that these fingers have gas liquid separation section, then some intermediate section and some storage sections and then we find that these are coming from here okay, and then it, these liquids are collected here whereas, the gas is coming up. So, liquid is going down whereas, the gas is coming up and this is going out from this particular uh, point. So, we have this gas riser which are connected to each finger at the transition zone between the separation and intermediate section. So, the, these are the gas risers which are there in this particular section and, and as I said these are the 
fingers. And then we have gas equalization lines which are located on each finger why because to locate it within the slug storage sections. So, we have the um, equal equalization line as we can see here this equalization line they are keeping the pressures equal and then we have the liquid headers these liquid headers are collecting the liquid and um, from each finger and will not be sloped and is configured perpendicular to the fingers. So, here we find the actual thing the gas mixture is coming here and is a splitter and is splitting the gas mixture into various fingers and we find the gas being lighter it is coming out from the gas outlet and these are the um, gas risers and we we have this is a separating section and we find the liquid is coming down which cannot be seen from this figure, but on this back of this this liquid is coming down and these are being collected in this header and from the header from the various header they are going back going out of the system and the gas is coming out from the system. So, this is how a typical pipe type slug catcher works. If we compare the pipe type with the vessel type we find that these are cheaper than the vessel type and the it can handle more um, gas than the vessel type that is why it is more common. And it is very easy to uh, also enhance the capacity by adding more number of uh, parallel pipelines uh, that is or the finger assembly. Next is this twister supersonic separator this is a later invention and this is a very interesting thing that it is a unique combination of expansion then cyclonic gas liquid separation and recompression after process steps and we shall see that why we need expansion etcetera we shall see that and then it is a very compact and tubular device uh, this is that is what is named the twister tube and to condense and separate water and heavy hydrocarbons that means in this case what we are doing we are the originally we are getting the gas as the feed but the gas will be containing some water vapor and some hydrocarbons and so uh, we are doing in this particular thing we are not using a separate condenser to condense out the high boiling components but only one particular this separator in which both the condensation as well as the separation are happening together so this is the advantage that we instead of having two separate sections we are having only one one module to do both the condensation as well as the separation. So, let us look into this thing. So, here we find this is a long section in which we have three sections one is expander, one is cyclone separator and another is a compressor. Now, this is the feed gas coming from here it this is a typical value of the and pressure and temperature here and what we find that as we have this kind of nozzle section it it when it goes nozzle section it expands nozzle section because of uh, this expansion this kind of gas gases they will they cool down and the cool down you can see that the cool down is happening to about minus 40 degree centigrade and about 30 bar. Now, at this particular low temperature many of the higher boiling point hydrocarbons can get condensed and even water can get um, solidified that means ice formation could be there. And then what in this cyclone separator as we know cyclone separator means there is a big swirl inside the uh, um, inside this um, uh, in the inside this section because swirling action uh, we learnt earlier that the higher um, uh, um, um, uh, density particles will be going towards the uh, um, uh, this um, uh, wall and the lower one will be staying near the axis and when we find that again it is um, uh, coming out from this section and in this again get compressed and the so that we can again get back get back some of the lost pressure energy and we find that it is coming out from here and we are regaining the pressure by this diverging section and this is a diffuser section and we are getting the pressure as about 70 bar and about the temperature rises to about 10 degrees centigrade and we are getting this thing and the liquid which is getting collected near the wall is coming out from this and it is collected from a separate port. So, in this way we find that first we are cooling to um, uh, separate out the higher boiling point components into solid or gases or then we are having the separation of these uh, different density 
um, uh, fluids and then we have the again the gas is coming out from this section. So, all these things are combined in this twister supersonic separator and supersonic because the gas reaches a high value of the it is goes to the supersonic speed uh, at this particular nozzle section. So, it is called supersonic separator. Now, the advantages are that it does not involve any moving parts as we have seen it is quite simple compact and low weight and quite reliable and we find that condensation and separation are happening at the supersonic velocities it eliminates the use of chemicals and associated regeneration systems and the water and uh, other hydrocarbons attain their dew point of the well gas to pipeline specifications okay, and the installed capacity is like this. So, the kind the water and these things this is also that means, this can also be used to adjust the dew point of the particular gas and because of the high uh, high uh, pressure of the system the components do, uh, do not tend to solidify they tend to stay only in the uh, liquid phase because uh, we know that with increase in the um, pressure uh, the condensation temperature also increases. So, that is why we find that all the components will stay um, at the most in the liquid phase and it can handle very high capacity of the gases. These uh, kind of separators are used for remote and offshore locations like reliable water and hydrocarbon dew point control to prevent corrosion and hydrate formation, uh, because there is very little time for the gas to pass through the separators. So, if there is not much uh, much of contact time between the hydrocarbons and the water, then the possibility of the hydrate formation will also come down. So, that is why and that is how this kind of separator helps in prevention of the hydrate formation. And the wherever we need the conditioning of the product gas coming from by uh, from the underground by removing the water and heavy hydrocarbons and remote power plant fuel gas conditioning by eliminating the need of the other chemicals with no or little uh, or uh, operator interventions. That means, in a remote place what happens if we are using any kind of chemicals then we have to also see to it that whenever the chemical is getting exhausted we have to replace the chemicals. So, that may not be feasible all the times. So, if we can have some device which does not need any kind of external chemicals to remove the uh, water then it will uh, then then we would prefer to have those kind of devices and this supersonic separator is one of those devices which does not need any external agent for the separation. So, it is preferred for the remotely located power plants. And next we come to this high efficiency liquid gas coalescer and these are effectively for removal of the aerosols in gas production processing and transmission. And what are aerosol? Aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid particles in air or another gas and as we know that aerosols are commonly even found in um, uh, various uh, in our day to day life also like in natural naturally we find this fog, dust, forest excludes then geyser streams they are all examples of naturally occurring aerosols and we can also have anthropogenic that is man made man made aerosol like haze then because of nowadays we are very much concerned about the air pollution. So, in that also we we get this particulate particulates are getting suspended in the air. So, that is also aerosol then we have the smokes they contain uh, carbon suits. So, they are also examples of aerosol. So, these kind of things can be effectively handled by these coalescers and coalesces means that agglomeration. So, what happens that this consists of cartridges made from pleated uh, glass fiber media supported by a metal core, because these uh, cartridges need uh, this uh, support metal supports because the glass fiber is very, um, very thin and they are not mechanically stable. So, to give the mechanical stability we use this metal cores and the fiber material allows for a fine porous structure and the fiber diameters are of a few micrometers the small pore size results in efficient capture and separation of the small aerosol particles and prevent any kind of re-entrainment of the liquids. So, this is a typical figure 
of this coal research that we find the dirty or wet gas is coming through this, it is passing through this up going upward and here we have the cartridges and here we find we are getting the clean gas out and whatever liquid is retained they are they go back and through the sums they come through and, and we find finally, we take out the liquid from the bottom of the coil reserve. So, here also we find that we are as such not using any kind of moving components to separate out the liquid and the gas. And this kind of uh, coil research find use in um, these compressors, turbo equipment, burner nozzles, amine and glycol contactors, molecular sieve beds and hydro titer catalyst beds. So, we are many places we are finding that we are able to we are using this kind of separators uh, in the natural gas processing. And these are the some of the references which you can look into to have further details about these various types of gas liquid separators. Thank you.